It's yet another draw for Man City in the Premier League. This time it's Spurs who have taken two points off City. But why weren't City able to beat Spurs? Why are these defensive errors coming into City's game? And what did City do right in the game, especially in the first half? How did City try to beat Spurs without the ball? That's what this video is going to focus on. The good, bad and the ugly of the game, particularly focusing on City's out of possession structure and how they try to beat Spurs without the ball. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look, shall we, at the starting 11s. You'll realize that Alvarez and Bernardo have swapped places. I'll get into why I think that may have been uh, the case. Spurs have got a lot of injury issues and suspension issues. So there was no Madison, no Van de Ven and no Romero. The back line of fullbacks. So in theory, a really good opportunity to get a win against Spurs and to really put them under pressure throughout the game and indeed early on if we're being honest with ourselves the first half should have ended 3-1-4-1-5-1-2 Man City these are the average positions from the team just look at how aggressive and look at how forward thinking that front line is uh, from Manchester City in particular it was a very very aggressive basically a man marking system where all of City's forward players would basically push up and occupy one Spurs player each uh, Kulishevsky and Lo Celso were playing just ahead of Basuma Rodri would push really far forward Forward, and a kanji would also push uh, really far forward so it's more like that, that sort of situation now we'll get into the issues that this might cause Hep knew that Spurs were even with their injuries were still going to try and play out from the back look at how many interceptions these City players are making Rodri, Gavardio, Walker, Banana Silva all getting more than one and it was constantly throughout the game passes per defensive action that basically means how many passes do Man City and Spurs allow before they engage in a defensive action. City were only allowing Spurs 11.6 passes per defensive action. That's one of the lowest that City have had all season. So you can really see the intent from City very early on. City tried to put pressure on Spurs' left-hand side in particular. Look at how many City players are committed forwards in the press. Bernardo's pushing, Foden's pushing, Alvarez is pushing, Walker's pushing. Eventually comes out to a Spurs player, forces an error. City press uh, has worked. Now, why was City trying to do this specifically down Spurs' left? They obviously did it down Spurs' right as well, but why mainly the left? I think the idea was pressure it down Spurs' left, win the ball back, and then because you've got this overload on the right-hand side, means that when you win the ball back, you can then quickly switch it over to... Docker. Here he is all on his own. It's a really good graph by Mark Stats on Twitter. All on his own in the top left in respect of the aggression via uh, carries. Basically our main outlet and how that links to the Bernardo Alvarez situation I think is because it means it's going to be easier for Bernardo Silva to switch it over to that side rather than Julian Alvarez partially due to a passing quality maybe but maybe more so the fact that Bernardo Silva is left footed. More examples of City pressing here. Here is Foden uh, up against uh, a doggy. Comes into uh, Lo Celso in the middle, I believe that is. Foden gets in ahead of him. Immediately comes in field, tries to find Doku. As we say, that right to left play. That results in a shot for Doku. Bit of a tame effort in the end, but again, five minutes in, that is already being uh, displayed. Once again, uh, Spurs on the edge of the box. This is actually just after Spurs have scored a goal. Don't worry, we will get into uh, the Spurs goals and the mistakes. They've just scored the goal. City immediately from, from kickoff there. Not happy, obviously. Again, pressurizing down Spurs' left-hand side. They win a throw-in. From here, immediately the throw-in. Bernardo Silva wins a foul. That free kick leads to the uh, the own goal. Alvarez, fantastic pressing forward, by the way. This is really really where he comes into his own. Just brilliant work to uh, pr uh, pressure uh, Emerson Royale. Forces an error, finds Bernardo, and obviously Hall and has to score that. Spurs actually in City's uh, defensive third. And it's Foden who does really well to intercept the player. What does he do immediately? He turns, plays it to Alvarez, who plays it to Doku. Doku actually ends up hitting, a, I think it's a combination of crossbar and post. So that's once again, we won it down Spurs' is left. We attack down our left via a really quick switch out to Doku. This is just before City's second goal. Basuma there on the ball. City players are pressurizing him. They win it back. They try to get it back to Doku. It comes back out. Gavardiol intercepts it. Once again, what's his first thought? I want to try to find Doku. And this is where Alvarez is really good. Look at the forward run he wants to make. He is that shadow striker. Does really well to get the ball. Finds Foden and Foden does really well to convert it. So City so far in this first half have done really well. This is just a few moments later. City 2-1 up now. Again, look at the pressure that Alvarez is trying to put on the Spurs defender. Wins it back. Holland plays it into Alvarez. Alvarez hits the post. Here are Spurs trying to play out from the back. Basuma makes a bit of a mess of it. City pick it up. 
Alvarez does really well to find Haaland. Haaland should score. City were fantastic in terms of the pressing in the first half. This is data from Mark Stats on Twitter. Look at the number of high turnovers. There, 11 of them, four of which led to a shot. At least one of those should have been converted into a goal. It was a really impressive pressing game from City. I think that they knew that Spurs were going to try to play out from the back, but they didn't have the quality to necessarily do that in light of all the injuries and the suspensions. Credit to Spurs for continuing to try to play that way. However, it should have resulted in City being 3-4-5-1 up at halftime. And Ange recognised this. He realised that his team were being outplayed, basically. He made a very important substitution. He recognised that Basuma was basically being left isolated on his own. Brian Joe came off, who struggled for the majority of the game. Hoybier came on. Johnson and Kluszewski moved out to the wings. And it meant that you now had this sort of a double pivot. It did mean that certainly in... Spurs' first phase of play in their build-up phase, they had more bodies there, so it meant it was easier for them to get out of the City press, and City's pressing in the second half. It's not a coincidence, it was much less effective. That being said, right at the start of the second half, Vicario is forced into an error. Look at all the City players around him. It's a bad pass. Bernardo Silva picks it up, takes a shot, and is a very good save by Vicario, uh, to be fair to him. Second half, again... City were still playing good football at this point. It's not hard to beat a press, for City anyway, if you are just simple with your passes and just keep it tidy and keep it neat. So here is Foden on the ball. Finds a Kanji who plays it uh, first time into Holland. Holland takes a touch. Holland passes it through to Rodri. And now look at how much space has been created for City. Look at all that juicy space that he can run into. We love to see like this is Jack Grealish at his absolute best when he's able to run into this space. He does exactly that. He picks out a really good ball for Holland. Maybe Holland could read it slightly better. Maybe it's a bit slightly too much on the pass by Grealish. Now, 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 now. This is. Wait. Now, this is when it gets to two all in the game. Again, I promise you, we will get into the bad of City in this match. But this is just another example of the pressing working really well. Basuma makes a bit of a mess of it. Look at all the City players around him. There's no way that he should be uh, trying to, uh, you know, play, play out of this. <laughs> Rodri wins it back. Rodri plays in Haaland. Haaland plays in Grealish. And City have scored the winner. In theory. In reality, no. I was very sad. I was at the Etihad. We talked about the good from City. They did enough to win the game. They should have won the game. They didn't win the game. Why didn't they win the game? This is the first goal. This is from our corner, mind. Foden should just bring down Gil. Kulishevsky plays a really good ball here. But still, this is a really good defensive position to be in. You've got two City players, Doku and Walker, two of our fastest players on the pitch, up against Son and I think it's Johnson. Doku just totally misunderstands the flight of the ball. Suddenly Son's in. Question marks on Kyle Walker. I've got some sympathy for him here because he's in no man's land a bit. Does he go to Son? Does he go to the other Spurs player? Maybe he could close him down. I don't know. And force an issue. I don't know. Either way, it's really bad goalkeeping by Edison. He should do better. Fantastic from Son, by the way. Obviously, Edison should still do better, though. This is an example of my gripe with Alvarez as a midfielder. He thinks he has more time on the ball than he does. He loses the ball there. And a few seconds later, Diaz is forced into a, a goal-saving uh, uh, interception. Remember that sequence? I showed you earlier where it was nice simple passing from City no real risks taken Kanji ball here he's about to find Alvarez there's no danger here Alvarez runs to the ball now he is being pressurized by a Spurs player there but still this is a good situation to be in for Alvarez he can play a simple pass over there he could take a touch bring it out to there and if he wanted to he could play a pass back to the goalkeeper there. He could take a touch and play it out to the wide player here. There are a lot of options here for Alvarez. I'll tell you what isn't the option to play a blind 180 degree first time lobbed pass, assuming the Haaland is making a run in behind Ben Davis, which he isn't, by the way. And Alvarez has no reason to think he is because at no stage in this whole passage does Alvarez scan even once to see what's going on around him. Really good interception by Davis. Look at that diving header. Shades of Robin Van Persie at the 2014 World Cup. Within three seconds, Spurs are on us. And look at our back four. That's Walker. That's Akanji. That's Diaz. That's Gavardiol. That's our back four just totally at sixes and sevens. That's our midfield two of Rodri and Bernardo. 
obviously, the players are nowhere. You shouldn't be losing the ball just arbitrarily because a player decides to do a hero ball for no reason when there was no need to do it when you're up against a really difficult team in Spurs. It's really good work by Lascelles. A fantastic run by Son, by the way, to take Rodri out of it. People have critiqued Diaz for not blocking it. I think that's very harsh. It is a very good strike by Lacelso. I think if, any, if I'm going to blame any City defensive player, I'm going to blame Edison again. I, he gets a glove on it. I feel like maybe if he gets a glove, maybe he should save it. But again, that just stems from just being careless and sloppy in the midfield and just seceding um, a stupid counter-attacking opportunity. Despite that error... City have got back into the game. It's the 89th minute. My first complaint is, why are we so high up the pitch? Just go back a bit. No, says Kovacic. <laughs> no, says Rico Lewis. I'm not going to defend my box. I'm going to go straight in and high press. And again, it's a nice idea. In theory, if you win it there, then you are in. But it's a 90th minute. Do you need to be taking that risk? Realistically, I don't think so. Skip does really well, by the way, to get out of uh, Kovacic and Rico Lewis there. Despite that... This is a good situation for City to be in. There's the back four. You've got plenty of bodies in the middle. Coming back. Here comes Kulishevsky. Ake actually checks over his shoulder to know he's there. So Ake's got Kulishevsky. Uh, Walker's clearly got Johnson. So Kyle Walker, he must know that he's got Bernardo Silva supporting him there. So City have got more bodies back than Spurs have forwards, despite the error. So tackle him, Walker. You might as well. There's no, there's no reason to not tackle him. Tackle him. Tackle him. Tackle him. Oh, you've, you've allowed him to get ahead of you. Oh, you've allowed the cross. Oh, you've scored. Ah. That case should probably do better. That's just bad from Kyle Walker. I don't know why he's not committing and trying to put the foot in. Ultimately, City should have won the game by basically every single metric. Look at the expected threat. I mean, it's not even close. Look at the XG. It's not even close. But the reality is that even though they played so well in the first half, they couldn't kill the game. Spurs created very, very little. City's press worked really, really well. Second half, they continued with that press. And in theory, that was fine. But the addition of Hoybier to the midfield meant that it was going to be less um, effective. City created very few chances in the second half relative to the first half. Spurs actually had more possession of the ball than City in the second half as well, so that change clearly worked. Another issue later in the season is that if you've got all these players committed, as we have seen in recent times, means there is so much space here for players to run into. It's asking a lot of Rodri. I'm like, just broken, so final thoughts time. City should have won the game. Once again, their own worst enemy in terms of not finishing off those chances. There is still a big midfield issue here. Rodri is being asked to cover a lot of ground. We need someone like a Nunes in that team. I'm still not happy with Alvarez in the midfield. Foden being shoved on the right wing is still really infuriating me. The one time he moved into the middle and like, like rotated with Bernardo, that actually led to the goal for Man City. Once the likes of De Bruyne and Stones come back, it will obviously be better. However, it's really bad that we've now dropped six points in the last three games. That's the video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please make sure to leave a like on the video. If you'd like to go the extra mile, you can become a YouTube member or a Patreon supporter. I'll put the link in the top of the comment section in case you would like to support the channel directly. It does really help me make these videos for you guys. Hope you're enjoying the series. I'll see you guys next time.